This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. We begin at five with breaking news coming out of North St. Louis County. New Halls Ferry Road is shut down between Newcastle and North Lindbergh due to a deadly crash. Good evening, I'm Brent Solomon. Missouri Highway Patrol confirms that one person died in that crash. It happened just before three this afternoon at the intersection of New Halls Ferry Road and at Newcastle Drive. Our news team arrived on scene about 30 minutes later. Missouri State Highway Patrol telling us two vehicles were involved. One person died on scene. We've been speaking with neighbors who say people often drive too fast in that area. At this red light here, you have to be very careful because the people are going by. They don't stop for the green light or red light. They just go right through it. So you have to be very careful at this intersection right here. It's a very dangerous situation. And police are now investigating whether speed was a factor in that crash. St. Louis County Police still have roads blocked off in that area. Neighbors are talking with one another, trying to understand what happened. We'll have the latest information for you coming up in just one hour. Right now, traffic is moving slowly on I-64 near the Hampton exit. We're looking at this slow moving traffic as some lanes are closed for a crash that happened there. We're working to learn more about how it happened. We will continue to follow both of these breaking stories on air and on KSC.com. Stick with us as we learn more. Well, hundreds gathered today to remember the life and legacy of Jean Carnahan. The former First Lady of Missouri and U.S. Senator paved the way for women to represent Missouri. Five on your side attended today's public memorial at the Sheldon Concert Hall. Mercedes McKay reports. Inside the renowned Sheldon Concert Hall in downtown St. Louis, a pioneer remembered. We're here for the celebration of the life of a great woman, of a friend, a mother, a grandmother, someone who laid out her life uh, as one of, of service. Jean Carnahan died on January 30th at the age of 90. After years of public service, making history when she was the first woman to represent Missouri in the U.S. Senate in 2001. We're all terribly sad to say goodbye to this extraordinary woman, but she wanted to be remembered as the person who touched our lives gave us inspiration and meaning, and consistently brought a smile to our faces. After proudly holding the title of Missouri's First Lady in the 90s, Carnahan was appointed to the U.S. Senate, stepping into the role after her husband's tragic passing just three weeks before he was elected. Saturday morning, her son touched on the captivating way his mother could win over a crowd of politicians. When she spoke, you could hear a pin drop. She just had a way of capturing people's attention and imagination. The words she chose to say, but also how she said them. While most of the state of Missouri and the world will remember her for what she accomplished on the big stage in D.C., those that had the privilege of calling her mom and grandma will remember her for her constant joy, grace, and selfless acts. Mom, you left us a great outline, an unfinished manuscript. She expects us to blast out of here today with her example etched in your hearts. She expects us to dream. Dream big, and when you do, Gene Carnahan will be smart. Mercedes McKay, five on your side. Well, dozens of firefighters battled a major fire in North City this morning. A vacant building went up in flames just north of Warren and Cusseth near Fairground Park. Some 30 firefighters responding. Amarin also responded because the fire posed a threat to nearby power lines. Time now for your weather first forecast. Meteorologist Gary Frank is standing by with more on how cold it's actually supposed to get this weekend. Yeah, you know, temps coming down a little bit here over the next couple of days. Still pretty mild for this time of the year, but uh, it has been cloudier today uh, versus the last couple of days, which have been warm as that front pushed through. And you can see where those clouds have really increased. The rain staying to the south for the most part after yesterday's light rain or even a few thunderstorms late at night or early morning, depending on where you are south of the city specifically. But for the most part, it's just cloudy. The wind continues to blow out of a different direction than yesterday 
as temps at 44 with a northwest breeze at six miles an hour. A little closer to normal for once as we continue to look at the next several hours. Uh, we're still going to look at temps holding steady in the mid 40s here and then not dropping a whole lot, at least in the short term, until things clear up. And that's what we'll focus on here as clouds into the overnight hours break a little bit. We'll talk about that colder air rushing in overnight and when we may see a few flakes of snow over the next 24 to 36 hours. All right, we'll see you then. It is Mardi Gras weekend and festivities are happening all across the bi-state. Bob on your side, Travis Cummings takes us to one of the biggest events, the Grand Parade in St. Louis. The sound of a good time. It's St. Louis's 45th year letting them roll. The Grand Parade made its way from downtown to Soulard and brought out the masses to celebrate Mardi Gras on Saturday. You'll always see the Gateway Precision lawn chair crew on the route. We practice a couple nights before the parade. We practice right before the parade. Sometimes we train people at the parade. And it's, I mean, if I can do this, anybody can do this. They've been sharing their routine for 30 years. They love us. I mean, they treat us like rock stars when we go through the parade. And it's a special year for crew member Becky Heine. This year, because my 20-year-old daughter is with me for the first time for Mardi Gras, that's her right behind. There's a Mardi Gras where she was in my belly when I marched with the lawn chairs. This year's theme is by the numbers. There's close to 80 crews that roll through and thousands that come out to see them march. Benita Lieber has been on the creative team designing and coordinating these floats for many years. These folks are putting on entertainment and I'm smiling because I'm helping them do that. I, it makes my heart happy. Whether you're volunteering to put it on or bringing the family out to celebrate, it's a good time to see the people of St. Louis together. And everyone's gonna have a great time and the mom and me says everybody better behave. Just, just want everybody to stay safe and laissez-les bon temps relay. Travis Cummings, five on your side. The mayor has that down pat. Well, Mardi Gras contributes some $20 million to the local economy and organizers begin planning for next year's celebration tomorrow. A massive food giveaway from the Urban League today. Why organizers say it's meeting a huge need in our area. 